Welcome to the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast, Season 2, Episode 2. Joining me this week, um, back for the first time this season, Nikki Metz from Johannesburg. Welcome back, Nikki. Yeah. Um, also with us this week, um, Greg Taylor from Brazil. Bon dia from me and boa tarde to, to you, because it's morning here and afternoon there. <laughs> and fresh from um, the game at stake yesterday, Mary Morton from London. Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, as always, um, probably the best place to start with is the game yesterday. Um, Nikki, we haven't heard your dog fit tones on the podcast for a while. So, um, where did you watch the game and um, what was your take on the game? I was at home in my living room, really happy in the first half and really pissed off in the second half. <laughs> I can't believe that we just threw away two points like that uh, three points like that that we we had the tunnel lead and you know we fell to pieces in the second half the minute came went off i thought that we just fell to pieces uh, a little bit we just we weren't there uh, i think that there were poor substitutions made i mean with all due respect i know everybody wants lamela to come good but oh my god i don't know what the hell he was doing yesterday and um we just didn't have anybody to take control and, and take charge on the pitch. So, um, first half, really elated, happy with the 2-0 uh, lead. Second half, really disappointed that we let them equalise. Um, yeah, it was just spursy, and I hate that word, but that's what it was. Um, talking of Lamella, Greg, you're his biggest fan. Um, <laughs> he, he had half an hour yesterday to prove um, that he's worthy of, 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 of a place in the team. He didn't take that opportunity, did he? Well, he is worthy of a place in the team, but I'm not going to defend him for yesterday. I mean, I, I do like him. I mean, I've got a shirt somewhere in Curitiba in the south of the country just sitting there waiting for the post office to send out to me with Lamella's name on the back. But I'm not going to defend him for anything yesterday because he... I mean, it's quite often he comes on and he does make a difference, but yesterday he didn't. He didn't make any difference whatsoever. Mary, mm. you and I were at the game yesterday. Um, we were. What was your take on on the match and Lamella, and where did it go wrong? Um, there were several places actually. When we for the first fifteen or twenty minutes of the second half, we were fine, and we were pressing them. And then they brought on Stephen Ireland, which made a massive difference to them. We brought on Lamella, who was completely just disappeared, and we lost Harry Kane. Now, it seems to me that there was no contingency plan. I mean, if you think about we've only got one recognised striker. Yes, we've still got Adebayor, but he hasn't got a squad number, so he's not in the squad. There was no contingency plan, and it looked like the, the rest of the team were kind of like, well, where do we bring the ball now? It, it just seemed to me that there was just no urgency. A few of them really need to work on their fitness. They were quite sluggish. Um, but, yeah, that that's more or less my take on it. Mm. Um, it was odd that... I can only assume, I think I read in the reports, that... Um, Harry Kane had cramp, so I suppose Poch had to take him off. But as soon as he went off, we didn't have that outlet outlet up front. We didn't have somebody who could hold up the ball. We didn't have somebody that that would make the run. So when when we had the ball and we were attacking and going forward, there was nobody up there to pass to. Exactly. That, that, um, that's what I'm saying. They didn't seem to have a contingency plan in the event that he would have to come off or got sent off or whatever. And they have to do that until we get another striker. We can't. We can't play the next three or four games like that. You just can't. Mm. I like Poch, um, but I think it's terribly <laughs> short-sighted of him to 
Um, he said a few a few days ago that you know it's fine. We've got Chadley and Lamella, and they can play. They can play up top, but they're not centre forwards. They're not no. somebody in the in the mould of Harry Kane. Somebody who can hold the ball up, or somebody that can run the channels. Um, and okay, he pulled up with cramp, so hopefully he'll be back for the next game against Leicester. But um, you know, God forbid if if he'd got a, a serious injury. Um, and, and was out for a few games, we'd be screwed. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it, it, as M said, um, I think the the other thing is, obviously, yes, they've just come back, but they, they're not match fit yet, so they're definitely not, because they look very tired in the second half. And, uh, and like headless chickens, really. It was like, I didn't know what they were doing half the time. It was just disappointing to watch, you know, after all the hype. And, and and this morning I was saying to Paul, you know what, I just I would just get rid of half of them and, and bring in some of the newbies and make these guys work for their place in the squad because it's just like a given. Bentaleb, everybody knows I love Bentaleb. He had a shocking game last week and this week he was left out of the squad. Yes, he was brought in. He didn't make much of a di- difference anyway, you know, in the second half, I didn't think. So, you know, the way I see it is these guys need to start working for their place in the squad because it's not a given that they should be there because if they don't want to work for it, then fuck off. That's how I feel about it. And I haven't even been drinking, guys. <laughs> and that's my first swear word of the band season. <laughs> so, um, Mary and I, we were, we were in the, um, well... Okay, so Mary, myself, Mary, there's a few other people who've appeared on the podcast before, um, Nick Seal, um, Rebecca Braddock, uh, Lynette Keeler, who's appeared on one of the pro- on, on the All Girl podcast back in February. Um, we were all in the Park, park Lane, um, minus bagels. Um, and, <laughs> um, you made my day with that, I'm telling you. <laughs> and... Uh, Saw a few other people at the game, which which was nice. Zach, who's appeared on the podcast, um, uh, Carol, who was um, with the the OAPs and and all the quiet people in sorry with the families, all, all the all the, the the less rowdy people, should I say, um, over, in the, over, in the pa- <laughs> over in the over in the that that <laughs> came out didn't mean to come out like that. Um, I was not in, I wasn't inferring that that she's she's old, but. Um, Anyway, um, <laughs> and uh, b- b- who else did I bump into? Um, ASD from the Echoes of Glory podcast. Um, I met, met him at half time. He was in the park lane as well. And um, from our vantage point in the in the park lane, Mary, I thought that uh, yeah, up until we scored, I thought Larice looked good. It was good. It was you know good to have him back between the sticks. I thought yeah. that um, Kyle Walker played well. I think that's two games on the spin. I think I think he did well. I think Toby and Jan Vertonghen look like they really look solid. It looks like there's good understanding. Um, and I thought Ben De- Davis again did okay. Was solid, but he he doesn't offer the same attacking threat going forward. Um, yeah. Midfield Dyer. He's we said it last week. I think he's a square peg in a round hole. But he he does a job for the team. But you know, we need a recognised midfield midfield player in there. Um, I thought it was really good to see Mason back. Um, he yeah. was quite tenacious. Uh, Chadley did well, scored a goal. Um, uh, Dembele, uh, I give up with him. And um, <laughs> oh, you did not just say that. Yeah, yeah, he did, and I, oh, I have to. I have to agree. He's too inconsistent. No, Far too inconsistent. I disagree with you both. I'm sorry. Yes, he wasn't great in the second half. Sorry, I'm cutting you both off there. But I mean, if it wasn't for Musa and 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 his strength was holding the ball, I'm sorry, guys. I disagree with that. He is. He was really good. He is better than he has been, but I wouldn't say he's yeah. really good. Oh, he's much better. He's vastly improved from last season. He's starting to show the old Musa. Hmm. I agree with, with you that he's, imp- he's improved, but he's he, he is too inconsistent. He it's just, all right turning it on for 45 minutes. There's another 45 minutes left to play. I'm sorry, but I am going to go on a rant here. Like uh, I said, there was no plan B, yeah? Now, mm. there are 11 p- 
paid full-time professional footballers. If they cannot organise how to play a fucking game of football between them, then maybe, just maybe, they need to take a look at their options because it was ridiculous. Mm. I'm sorry, it was just ridiculous. Mm. Surely to Christ, somebody out in that field, yeah, could say to the, could think, you know what, our striker is gone, we've no other strikers, the manager hasn't given us a plan B, what will happen if we have no strikers? Oh, what do we do? Oh, let's run around like headless chickens for the next 20 minutes and lose two goals. But but Poch is, surely Poch is going to take some of the blame for that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I, I know his hand was forced yeah. because he had to take Kane off, but um, <clears throat> if if surely it's something that they would have. Pra- I would like to think they would have practiced in training. You know, a situation where they've lost Kane, they don't have any any recognised strikers, and they've prepared for that. A bit like, for instance, you know, it's not uncommon for for teams to practice playing with ten men. In the eventuality, if they're ever in a scenario where they go down to um, ten men, so uh, that. I think Poch needs to take a little bit of the blame there, but um, yeah, he does. Well, he has... does. He needs to take the blame because he'd no plan. That's the problem. There has to be contingency. Whenever you're planning something, you have to plan contingency because yeah, it, shit happens. Yeah, it, it, exactly. You could have somebody sent off. Okay, I mean, right. For instance, Luis, if he got sent off yesterday. Harry goes and goal. But hey-ho, Harry went off yesterday. So uh, what happens there? There has oh, to be a, kind- a contingency. If Laurie, had, if Loris had been sent off, then Vaughan would have got in goal. They'd, they'd have changed an mm-hmm. outfielder, wouldn't they? Well, there you okay. go. So why couldn't they have that plan for when Keane went off, or Kane, sorry, went off the field? I, okay, I don't guys, get that. We're still losing sight of the fact that we still got the same problem as previous seasons. Our defence is up to shit. We're supposed to be building the team from the back. Our defence is no better than previous seasons. And the fact that we conceded, yes, one was a penalty and and, and Alderweireld, uh, you know, messed up there. But mm. the fact of the matter remains, we're still weak at the back. We've supposedly got these players in now to try and help and, and, and firm up our defence. But the fact that we were able to let in another goal, forget about the penalty, let in a, another goal for them to equalise tells me that we've still got problems in the back. So even if Harry stayed on, we still conceded. Yes, I know it changed the game when he went off, mm. but we still conceded goals and our defence is still up to shit. I, okay. I, I think that you can't argue with the, with the facts. We conceded two goals yesterday and we conceded one yesterday, uh, one last week. So in that respect, I agree. I, I, I don't think it's, it's as bad as um, the picture you paint out. Cause I think Toby looked solid in both games and I think he's got good understanding with, with Jan. Uh, why did we concede those goals? I don't know. Laps of con- concentration. The first one, I'd be interested, Nikki and Greg, um, particularly, I, Mary, I don't know if you, you, you had a, had better sight of it but when I, I've only seen it once and that was in real time and I, it didn't look like a penalty to me I haven't seen it on TV I haven't seen it subsequently was it a penalty because to me it looked a bit dubious I thought it was very soft um, it was yeah I mean I, the thing is that where it was as well I mean does it warrant a penalty I don't, the thing is that it was a foul so it was in the box so you have to give a penalty but where it was there's no way that was that was impeding a goal scoring opportunity or anything like that. The most no. it was doing was impeding the ball going over the line for a goal for a goal kick or a corner. Mm. Um, and he he did go down very easily. Yeah. Very easily. The fact is it was given and that brought them back in the game and obviously they've seen the fact that Kane's gone gone off the pitch. So that's gonna give them a bit of a confidence boost. But we still should have, but even at two one up, we should have still still been able to hold on to that. And and that second goal again, I've only seen it just just the once. And from what I saw at the time, it looked as though we should have cleared that. Again, I I haven't I haven't seen replays of it, so um, um I have um it, it, yeah, it, it was a penalty. It was a soft penalty. He did go down like a sack of sports, but. Toby did put his hands on him and he had no need to and that's the problem and it is I would call that yet yeah, as somebody just said a lapse of concentration 
looking at it in real time like you were, um, Javid, it, it did look um, a bit soft. Uh, we weren't quite sure because obviously we don't have the benefit of hindsight when you're actually watching a game and you're there. Um, seen it about two or three times last night in match of the day. He did put his hands in them and that's where the problem lay. He, he didn't need to. It was going nowhere. The thing is that un- until the penalty, I... I kind of felt like I did with the, when we beat Arsenal. Not because we were playing as well as when we beat Arsenal, but because I felt I felt comfortable. I didn't see how Stoke were going to get back in the game. And then when they got the the, the soft penalty, it kind of collapsed. And yeah. I was back on the roller coaster and not enjoying it. The, I'll be honest with you. They made another difference yesterday. Is they made the right substitutes? We didn't. Mm. Yeah. And he did. Watching it on match of the day last night, as you say, you're there at the game, it's a little bit different, but watching different things, Steve and Ireland made a huge difference to that game yesterday. Because for the minute he got the ball, he was just pinging it in time after time. And that's where it started. Yeah, we get that led, he passed in that ball that led to the penalty. He passed in the second, that led to the second goal. So he did make it another problem. There you go. Wrong substitutes. Oh. Although we could know there's nothing we can do about Harry Kane. He was injured. But otherwise, yeah. it was the wrong choice of substitutes. Also, I mean, it, Bentlab was bringing on Bentlab was a bit odd um, because Mason had a really good game, I thought. Yeah, and yeah but he was t- looking yeah. tired, guys. He was looking tired at the end. Yeah. They, he was, Nikki, you're, you're absolutely right. He was looking tired. In, in, but by about after 80 minutes, even less, they were really sluggish. Yeah. That's why they, they were they, very, they... very sluggish. Mm, completely. Another thing I think is that there's too much passing back to the goalkeeper. I mean, at, yeah. at one point, at one point, they flashed up the, the figures on the screen and Loris had had 31 touches to Butland's 16 or 17 or something. Yeah. And it wasn't as if he was having to make lots of saves. They were just, I mean, they were treating him like an outfield player. And the thing is that if you're, if you're further back towards your own goal, you're giving the other, the other team a better chance to score, aren't you? Because it's nearer. I mean, not every week everybody scores from the halfway line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I was just look. I watched the um, the post match interview with um, Pochettino, and and yes, you could see that he looked disappointed, but he looked upset and annoyed. Whether that's mostly with himself or with his players, who knows? But somebody stuffed up, and I think it's fifty fifty between him and his players. And somebody better catch a wake up because you know to throw away a two 0 lead like that is absolutely against Stoke. Is absolutely bullshit. Maybe he was pissed off because we haven't been able to get that, that other striker in yet, or those two other strikers. If something's holding it up, I mean, that would piss me off if I was him, because he'd had to bring off Kane. Probably, maybe, if if uh, Clint had been organised earlier, or if Bar- Barahino had come in, or whoever we're going to buy, maybe if they were there, he would have put them on instead of Kane, and it would have you know been different. At least we would have had another striker on board. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, the problem, I think the problem we've got, and... I said it. I think I said it after the game yesterday, and I've said it on the forum during the week. Is is that a buyer? We're still paying for him. Yeah. We're still paying him a wage. He hasn't got a squad number. And in fairness, Levy's kind of looking at it. Well, I'm not. I'm not buying somebody else in until we've got shot of him. Well, the fucking arsehole won't just piss off. Do you know what I mean? He just won't go anywhere. Oh, I'm not. I'm not moving up to Birmingham. West Ham have refused to pay his wages, which he's probably asking for extortionate money. Um, and I think this is a massive stumbling block. We have to get shot of him. He's a real millstone round our neck. He is a yeah. massive, massive pain in the fucking arse, and that is the end of us. So, Levy's, Levy's a, bit, <laughs> Sorry. Le, Levy's a <laughs> businessman, and um, if I was tr- trying to look at it from Levy's perspective, then obviously Levy wants to get something back um but frankly even with that mindset if i, if I was in levy's shoes i I'd, I'd i'd happily take the loss on him and just just yeah. release him on a free transfer because it's just more trouble than it's worth you know you don't 
Sorry? He won't, he he won't, won't it's, it. It's just, it's petty, it's just ridiculous. I know, but how much money have we just lost on Soldado? Uh-huh. That was a massive hit. You're going to take another hit on another player. He won't. He, like you said, he is a businessman. Hmm. And we just we just need rid of the man. Really, we do. It's as simple as that. Okay, well, we've still got two weeks to the end of the transfer window, so hopefully two weeks or less than that from now. Um, Addy will find the road up the the way up the M1 to Villa and uh, or wherever he wants to go, and he'll, he'll be out of the door. Um, Send him on loan to Rangers. <laughs> that would be brilliant. Send him up to Scotland. He could go to Stoke. That, 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 I could see him fitting in there. Um, could, but he won't live up there. This is the problem. He wants to stay in London. QPR. Would they have him? Brentford. Brentford. He won't want to play in the Championship. He thinks he's a big player. Mm. He's not going to take a hit down to the to the Championship. He thinks that he should be top dog in a Premier League team. That's I what thought... he. That's his he, his opinion. How long has he got left on his contract? I thought I thought it was up this. I think it's another year. Yeah, yeah I, think I think it's, it's another, another year. year as well. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, let's. It's difficult to to draw positives, um, and I'm, this is clutching against draws. But um, we've got one more point than we did last season when we played Stoke at home. Um, you know, and we, nobody got sent off. Nobody got sent off. It's a slow. We've made a slow start to season, but it, but if you look at the last two season, well, I, I remember when AVB took over, and we we made an awful start to that season. I think we lost away to Newcastle, and then we drew our next two home matches. Um, yeah. We went on um, and put together a runner. I think it was unbeaten from about December to March. I know a lot of that was um, down to a, a certain Mr. Gareth Bale, but um, you know it doesn't. How you start the season, you, you you can win your first two games like Leicester City have, um, but and they're top of the table. But that doesn't mean to say that they're going to be there come the end of the season or even halfway through the season. So um, there's still a lot of football to be. Played. The, the depressing thing is, um, I, I think I heard this on another podcast, I can't remember which, um, last week, and they were looking at the Stoke City game, and somebody said that the Stoke City game would be a good barometer um, to see how we're going to fare this season. And they're probably, I suppose, right, because, you know, home against teams like Stoke, these are the games at home that we should be winning. Um, yet we just, it seems to be same old Tottenham, we just can't break these teams down albeit yesterday we had the opposite problem which is we actually managed to break them down managed to go into the game second half and beyond um, 60 minutes in 2 nil up yet we then just gave up really and, and let them back in um, that's the not the penalty killed us didn't it <sighs> yeah yeah the penalty Definitely. killed us and but it we... shouldn't have but we should have. Where are the Nikki? You've said this before. But where, where, where are the leaders in our team? Where are the, the people that show character? Mason's one of them, but um, there isn't anybody that that's so got that character. Somebody, the scrap of the Nikki yeah. says, "Okay, guys. So, so he's off now. You know, let's let's show everybody what we're made of." But the thing is that again, like we said, I don't. I don't. I disagree. I don't think that this is a. And this is probably my optimism that comes out every single season, okay? It's one game. It's just put it behind us. Um, I don't think it's 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 an indication of what our season's going to be like. Oh, uh, no, no, I meltdown. Disagree. I think that Poch is going to get back, get them back onto the fitness training. They're going to improve. I don't know how fast they're going to improve. That's going to be the interesting thing to see. But for me, I just think that he needs... To he needs to make smarter decisions when it comes to his substitutions. And and some of the players need to fight for their place in the squad. They, they shouldn't be the automatic choice just because, you know, oh, well, you did so well last season. Bullshit. I think every single player needs to fight for their position because only when they fight and they've got that desire to win will we start seeing results and desire to play as a team. Currently, it's just like, you know, each man for his own, really. I, I, it's, 
yeah. And and we need somebody to take leadership. I mean, Jan Vertonghen, I want to slap him over the head and say, catch a fucking wake up, you little dick. You know, you've got a perfect opportunity here to take leadership of this team. You're one of the one of the senior members of the squad. And he does nothing. He doesn't do Correct. it. I agree with you, Nikki. He is more than capable of, as you said, grabbing the game by the scruff of the neck and sorting it out. But he just doesn't seem to be arsed. No. No, he doesn't. And it's disappointing because, you know, for somebody like him, and that's why I'm saying, you know, I know that I know that everybody sort of didn't agree with me about about um, Musa, but I mean, he played a big part in how we won the ball yesterday in in Stokes half so often, and and you know they kept trying trying to attack up the right side quite a bit. So yes, there were occasions when he was a bit slow to help Walker mm. uh, and and Ireland. Uh, um, try to take advantage of that later in the game. So I do agree with that. But, I mean, you know, if, if we were going to s- score in the second half, he would have played an important part because he played an important part in the first half. And it's like you said, Em, he was there for 45 minutes. The second 45 minutes, he wasn't there. Maybe it mm. comes down to the match for this thing again. But I just think that Pochettino needs to make these guys, we've got some excellent young players, you know, waiting for their chance, and and I think we need to give it to them. We, they need a, they need a fight for their place because otherwise we're going to sit with this problem where we're going to be bitching every single week because we've thrown away leads, we've ended up drawing or we're losing games to a, a, a team like Stoke. For goodness' sake, I hate that mm. red and white shirt. It's just <laughs> pretty. I don't have any imagination. I mean, so, goodness. Talking of Stoke, so um. I, you know, I've, I've got a lot of respect for um, away fans that that make that journey, it's often long journey, and um, you know, that, that, that f- and make a lot of noise um, throughout the game. Um, last season, um, I was at the the, the semi final, the first leg against Sheffield United, and their fans were really vocal. Um, Crystal Palace always quite vocal. Everton. Um, Stoke City, right, for most of... a Mary will vouch for this. For most of yesterday, and we weren't too far from where where the Stoke fans are situated, for most of the game yesterday, we couldn't hear them. Um, and that's says a lot about them. It also, you know, credit... Let's give credit where it's due. Um, our home fans yesterday were, were... You know, the atmosphere was really good in the, in, in the park lane. Um, and... State City fans, you only sp- began to hear them right towards the end um, mm-hmm. when um, when the team team went up and and, and when they drew. Um, the funniest moment from yesterday: walking out of the out, out of the ground out, out of White, White Hart Lane along the high road, and there was a Stoke City fan, um, and he was protesting and he was just talking to police and he was saying something along the lines of. They're calling me inbreds, and he was complaining about the fact that. Um... Don't know you see my story. <laughs> I put that up yesterday. You did, yeah. In it fact... was a steward. It was it was three stewards, and <clears throat> basically, I think they were. I I have a feeling he got either thrown out, and he was kind of protesting, but it was hilarious. They were calling me inbred, and oh, that was it. I'm sorry, I was crying with laughter. <laughs> It was funny, you know. Um, but the, the funniest thing I've ever heard at a football match. They were very quiet, Javid, you're right. Mm. Um, well, the, actually, the park lane end was brilliant yesterday, I have to say. Well, I could Better hear than... you guys on the TV. Not you specifically, Em, but I could hear <laughs> the supporters. <laughs> Take I mean, a megaphone really next good. time. Yeah. Oh, God, no. I, I tell you what, I'm suffering for it today. My throat is killing me. <laughs> I've got a hurling match to watch in an hour's time. I won't be much better after that. <laughs> okay. Uh, good. Um, we've got Leicester next um, next week. Um, they're top of the table currently, and um, we'll talk about that game a bit, a little bit in the second half of the podcast. Um, before. Before we do that, I was going to play Elliot's forward line, which I'll I'll, I'll do shortly. Um, but 
I should just mention, so we had Merrick Wells um, on the podcast last week, um, and we've got now a bit of a Spurs World exclusive. I'm not about to announce a, a, a signing or anything like that. Sorry to disappoint, um, but it's a, a Spurs, a Tom Hotspur for Family podcast exclusive. So Merrick was on pod last week. He kindly put together a, um, a, a track for the podcast, um, which I'll be using going forward. Um, I think he only put it together last week. I've, I've had a listen and 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 like it, and, and so do um, Mary and Nikki and Greg. Um, I'll play it shortly, um, but just for, for some background info on Merrick. So Merrick obviously was on the podcast last week. Um, he he lives in in Zaragoza in Spain, um, and and has done for, for the last decade. Um, and uh, he's quite talented, Merrick. So um, he. Um, he's been singing all his life from school um, and cathedral choirs, pantomimes and musicals as a boy to soul, pop and rock acts based in Liverpool, London and Glasgow. He only took up the piano last year after accepting he was never going to be the world's greatest left-hand guitarist or even um, a practically good one. Um, He currently fronts a covers band that play American and British pop, funk, soul and rock covers in venues across Spain and is well into the emotional process of producing and mastering his first um, album of original material with his song uh, um, writing partner in the band he founded five years ago, The Lost Clauses. Um, And he's got a, a... an album which he's planning on releasing um, in sometime in 2015, which is a series of dance remixes commissioned by um, a local studio in Spain. Um, so the track, as I was saying, he's he's written especially for the podcast. It's a little slightly different in style to his normal sound, but it's 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 in a tradition well known to Tottenham fans. Um, he wanted to offer us something original for a theme tune and put together. Um, what I'm about to play shortly. Um, there's a full version in the pipeline that will that will be available to, for download later in the year. Um, and he's also sp- sp- spoken about releasing a charity cup final single in the future. So results permitting, we could be hearing more of Merrick's musical musings on the trials and tribulations of the f- following following the Lily White soon. Um, anyway, without further ado, here is Come On Tottenham. So bloody slow, you are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run on to that green. What our lane has seen is pain, it's at its low tonight. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those glory nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow, you are the first team. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her. Right, that was Come on Tottenham, our new original theme tune written and performed by our very own occasional contributor, Merrick Wells. Um, just to add, um, he's... He expects a hiatus around October as his wife is expected to deliver their first child, um, who already has two lullabies to their name. Merrick re- reliably informs me that if they have a girl, his Spanish wife has agreed to the name Lily Anna, therefore placing a Spurs milestone round the neck of a whole new generation. If it's a boy, he will not be named Roberto. <laughs> After dear old uh-huh. Roberto Soldado. Um, Anyway, right, Leicester game. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We'll do predictions in a minute. Um, here's, before we do, here's Elliot Line with this week's forward line. This is the forward line on the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast with me, Elliot Line, looking forward to the game against Leicester City on August the 22nd. Last season, we won this fixture by a score of 2 to 1. Our goals coming from Kane and Ericsson. I rate the likelihood of us scoring as 61%, of us scoring more than once as 21%. Keeping a clean sheet as 49%. The most likely scoreline is a 1-0 Spurs win, 
followed by a nil nil draw, a 1-1 draw and a 1-0 defeat. Overall I have 39% for a Spurs win, 33% for a draw and 28% for a Leicester City win. This has been the forward line with Elliot Line. Come on you Spurs. Welcome back to the second half of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. Thank you, Elliot. Um, so let's turn to that game. Um, Leicester City away next Saturday. They're top of the table. Um, 100% record so far. Um, we're going to break that record, aren't we, Nicky? Of course we are. <laughs> really? You got to me first. Oh, my God. The most <laughs> negative person in the bloody room at the moment. <laughs> uh I would like to say yes that we are. I think that maybe we will sometime this week we're going to get the revelation that we need to start picking up our bloody pulling up our socks and, and start playing like we mean it. And we'll go away and start picking up our away form and we are going to come away with the win for no other reason than we're pissed off that we've only drawn the first two games of the season. So yes, we're going to win next week. I think you should be in the in, in the um um in the changing room managing the team because uh, maybe it's that passion that they're just <laughs> that, that's missing at the moment. They need a bit of fire, you know. Po- Pochettino's perhaps too kind, too friendly, and just too laid back. Uh, he didn't look like he was going to be too kind after I saw that interview with him. He looked really, really pissed off. Um, so. I'm happy to go and talk to the boys, but you can't have Pochettino or Chadley in there because then I'm going to be distracted. I will have my chat with them afterwards. <laughs> and as Nikki, all... th- Thank yes? you for giving us another point, by the way, because you said we drew the l- first two matches and we didn't, unfortunately. But we'll take the point. Oh, my goodness. Oh, crap. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, my God. Yes, I forgot that we lost last week. You see, You see the optimism. Oh my word! <laughs> well, we've still got one more point than Woolwich. Oh, Every cloud. Oh, I mean, oh crap! Now you just reminded me, Greg. Thank you. None. Oh, fuck. damn it! <laughs> Greg, <laughs> um, actually, next week, Leicester away. Well, oh dear, dear. It would be nice to say we'll beat them. Um, I think we'll slow them down. I think that maybe we'll get a draw against them. Um, the thing is that we're, we're kind of putting out the same old faces. I think we need a we need a spark. I, I would like to see Deli Alley in there. Um, mm. mate, I mean, I, I know it's early. You know, he's only just come to us, really, from being back at Brentford. No, it wasn't Brentford, was it? Where, where was it he was? MK uh, Dons. MK Dons. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know we, we bought him and then lent him back to them. So he's only been with us recently. But in those two, in the two friendlies against Real and against uh, AC Milan, he, he wasn't faced at all. So, and it would be it would give us something to to cheer us up, you know. And it would give some Leicester something else to think about because they don't know what well, we don't know about him either. I think we may we may get a draw. I think it will be hard fought um, because they'll be on a they'll be on a roll at the moment. But it's Leicester, and then, as you said earlier, they're not going to stay up there for the whole season, and we should be climbing up. So I'm going to I'm going to go for a draw, unfortunately. Okay, I was going to turn to Mary for her prediction, but we she seems to be having some technical difficulties, and we've lost her for the moment. Hopefully, she'll be back. Um, I'm I won't be. Um, it's Leicester away. I won't. I won't be at the game. Um, I'll be watching it elsewhere, um, and uh, I predict that we're gonna we're gonna smash him five nil. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's have a bit of optimism. That's the spirit. Right. Well, I tried optimism last week, didn't I? I said three nil, and it ended up two two. So I hope no, you don't but, jinx but that was calculated opt- 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 optimism. Mine is blind optimism, um, which is uh, you know. You can't go. Well, you, can't, you can't really go wrong with with blind opt- optimism because nobody's going to expect us to win five nil. So, you know, mm-hmm. really well, go matter. for a Wigan then. Oh, nine nil. Yeah, nine nil. Yeah, 
without the the handball goal from the opposition. Yeah, okay. nine nil. I'll I'll start off with five. During the week, I'll take it up to seven, and by the time I'm watching the game next Saturday, it'll be nine nine or ten nil. <laughs> Sounds um, fair enough. Wait for an interesting experience. Right. Um, um, we've had some questions. Uh, so on Twitter, this is actually a question that was asked a few weeks ago, but I've saved it um, for Nikki. Um, so at 80 underscore Spurs asks, um, and I think specifically asked you, Nikki, um, have we seen any benefit in, sorry, ha- have we seen any benefit in South Africa to signing Mavisela, Kamolo, um I guess Stephen Pienaar even, are Spurs any more supported than other teams in South Africa? No, not really. Uh, you, you still get you still get the the Man United, the Chelsea, and the Arsenal supporters in huge numbers. So it it, it hasn't really made an impact. Although I must be, I must admit, I mean, I'm, I'm really quite surprised at how many Tottenham supporters we do have here. And, you know, in this country, um, football is, is very, or as it's called here, soccer is a very, very big thing in the, in the black communities. And, um, and it's just interesting how many, how many African supporters uh, we have. You know, it, it, that's, that's the nice part, I would say. Um, about about it, but no, having signed those those players hasn't improved our following at all. Not really. Mm. I mean, of course, you're doing your bit to um, indoctrinate um, young South Africans um, in the Spurs ways, aren't you? Yeah, that I am. I'm actually busy with Tottenham at the moment, um, trying to uh, set up a official supporters club here in South Africa in Joburg there is one but I don't personally think it's run very well mm-hmm. there's not enough information there's not enough exposure so um, I am yeah currently I've, I've sent in all the paperwork I've applied for uh, to become the uh, official supporters club for South Africa so hopefully within the next couple of weeks uh, we will be and then I'm definitely going to get our name out there more as much as I can. You know, it's just, it's just crappy that mm. you've got all these other supporters clubs and uh, and we're not seen as much. And I really think we need to improve that. that that's that's really good and, and encouraging to, to hear that you're doing that. Um, I was actually referring to um, the more subtle or maybe not so subtle um, indoctrination that takes place oh. with your. With your um, <laughs> With um, my great nephew and yeah. my friend's daughter, yes, the two little ones. I mean, they're uh, one years old and nearly two, and they have no choice but to support Spurs because that's just who they've, what's been chosen for them. But I, I must tell you, my little, we watched the game together last week, and my great nephew, uh, he was getting dressed, so they put out his little Spurs shirt and. When we recorded a, a little while back, we were busy recording and, and trying to get him to say Spurs. Um, I showed him the cockerel and, and I said, what's this? And he said, chicken. <laughs> so, of course, my nephew thought this was hysterical because he's a Man United supporter or fan because he's not really – he doesn't really watch all the games. He's very fair weather. Uh, I have nothing to do with that. I'm sorry. I do apologize. Anyway, I'm getting it right with my great nephew. So they were getting him dressed and showing him the cockerel and saying, "What's that?" And he he kept saying Spurs. And Michael, his dad, kept saying, "No, chicken." And Caden said, "No, Spurs." And then he hit his dad and said, "It's Spurs." So you know the indoctrination is working. It's it's, it's a long term project, isn't it? It's about sowing little seeds. Um, well, it and... is, and and obviously, you know, they, it's a lifetime of misery for them. But, <laughs> um, but you God, know, as long as they know abuse. that it comes from a good place. Before moving on to the next question, if, if, if they, there used to be a, a competition. I don't think it takes place anymore. You could, perhaps you correct me if I'm wrong, but a pre-season friendly in South Africa, the Vodafone Cup, um, mm. that. United, Man City and Tottenham in the past, Tottenham in 2012 for their yeah. pre-season took part in. I don't think, I've been looking at it since, but I don't think it's happened. I, I'm not, I don't know that it not, ex- exists anymore, which is a, which is no, a shame. 
it's a pity. Because they were there in 2011, and I'm, I think I mentioned this on a previous podcast. Um, I was completely by coincidence there in Johannesburg um, for work at the time, and not to see Spurs or anything like that, just just for work. And they happened to be staying in the same hotel that I was staying at. Um, so, and were there for you know for a good week or so. So. Um, they certainly were, were trying to build up that presence um, in 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 South Africa, but you know, with anything like that, you've got to, you can't just go there once and take part. Yet. Yeah, mm-hmm. you've got it's got to be sustained over a number of years. Anyway, um, Paul Esau, I like this question. Can the podcasters, if they wish to do so, pay a quick tr- tribute to? Bobby, uh, Roberto Soldado, who was sold to, of course, Villarreal earlier in the week, from their own perspective. Before I turn to the obvious person to turn to, Nikki, um, in light of uh, her... Um, well, I'll, I'll come to you in a, in, a, in a minute, but let me just read out um, what Roberto Soldado said earlier this week when he went back to, um, back to Spain. And he, I think he's posted this somewhere in social media land and it says back to La Liga these two years have been difficult for me but I wouldn't change this experience for nothing in the world I'm sorry for not being able to meet the expectations that Tottenham had put on me I felt at home from the first day I can only give many thanks to Tottenham for allowing me to represent the best club in England just repeat that I can only give my I can only give many thanks to Tottenham for allowing me to represent the best club in England Thanks for the elegance and treatment received from all the staff, from my teammates and the fans that didn't stop cheering and supporting me every second I was in the pitch. Thanks. My family and I, and I take with me great friends and this huge personal experience. We will always be a Spur family. Hashtag come on you Spurs. Oh. Doesn't it just say it all? Mm. He's such it does. a gentleman. He is such a gentleman. He is... He is pure class because, and I've said this before, you know, he was on the pitch. He gave his absolute all. Yes, he didn't necessarily uh, necessarily succeed the way he wanted to. But no matter what he did, he did it with class. And and for that, we can always be, be thankful. And, and that's why I think it, lo- it won him a lot of fans because, you know, he was their heart, body and soul. Yes, it didn't materialise into goals, but he was just, oh, Bobby, oh. You were reading that jab and I was getting a lump <laughs> in my throat all over again. Because, oh, oh, it's so sad. But look, I mean, I know, that, I know that he had to go. And, and, I mean, I would have just loved for him to stay and come good. But, you know, I mean, if anybody, if we could have gotten rid of anybody, it would be Eddie, not, not Bobby, but... You know, I wish him all the best, and and he's going to be very spursy and go and get his form back. And you know, you know, Villarreal are going to bloody succeed this season because they've got Bobby. Greg, you sad to see him go? Yeah, I am. I mean, I, I had a lot of time for Roberto Soldado. I mean, as as Nicky said, he always gave a hundred percent. It was just sort of luck. A lot of the. A lot of his misses were just soz luck. Um, and when he was on the pitch, he was always trying. He was trying to bring other people into the game. You could tell he was an intelligent footballer. It was it was just bad luck. I mean, he was a really good guy. I mean, you could tell he was a really good guy just by his attitude and the way that he talked about the club and the fans and, his, and in that goodbye message just now. Um, he will be missed. Uh, I will keep an eye on Villarreal now, and I'm not going to stop following him, following him on Twitter either. Absolutely. I think, from his own perspective, um, well, firstly, the most important thing is Tottenham Hotspur, and uh, you know, if a player is not performing and doesn't fit in with the plans, then you've got to move, move them on. But actually. And you wouldn't normally say this because, like I said, Spurs is the most important thing. But because he was such a nice guy, from his perspective, the way I, the way I see it is, um, it was in his own, it was in his best interest to go somewhere else. Otherwise, agree one hundred percent. You know, yeah. he would have just laboured, and so I, I really hope that it works out for him. You know, I'm, I'm sad that 
I'm not sad that he's leaving. I'm just sad that it didn't work out for him in a Spurs shirt in the way that we all wanted it to. But, you know, sometimes so, that's, that's life. Yeah. Uh, just, um, sorry, Jeb. Just, yeah. just uh, a quick note. Martin Cloak wrote, uh, wrote an article. Martin Cloak from the Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust. And um, I think he was just retweeted on, on Twitter because it's, he wrote a piece about Soldado. And... It was just, it's just, he just summed it up really, really nicely. And, you know, he speaks about here where, where he said that, um, sorry, I'm just trying to find it because I'm reading it as I'm talking to you, that he had finished in the top, t- top six of La Liga's goal scoring charts for each of the four seasons before Spurs signed him. And only ne- Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo have done the same. But at Valencia, he thrived on, a ser- on the service a penalty box predator needs, and Spurs simply did not play that way. It's just an interesting yeah. insight to to Bobby, and um, and just how it, it's just sad because and he calls him Bobby Soldier, and it's so true because he was a real soldier. He tried all the time, no matter how bad it was. You know, you, you, he tech, his technical ability, you could not question because he is just that good. And and it's just sad that it didn't happen for him at Spurs. Right. Uh, we think a lot. Can you hear me? We, ooh. Hello. Hello Mary. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> I've been here all the time. Well, yes, we know that, but we couldn't hear you. Right, I've gone in through my phone this time, so um, and I've got you all on loudspeaker. I've got no headset on, so you'll have to excuse noise and etc. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks. Okay, um, let's move on. Um, we've got a few questions to get through. Um, we talked about the young players earlier. Um, I can't remember. I think it was Nikki um, mentioning giving the young players a chance. So Zach Gesnola, um who it was at the game yesterday and uh, he was sat next to Flav and T from the Fighting Cock, um, which um, I'm not in any way jealous about. Um, and uh, Yes, you are. <laughs> um, I've met them before, so I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Zach asks, how much, more, how much game time do you expect to see from Deli Alley and Pritchard before Christmas? Um, he suspects that, that they might force their way in via um, the Europa like Kane did last season and Mason in the um, uh, whatever it was the Capital One Cup Capital One, yeah. well look I I, I, I think uh, perhaps they could come that route you know but then again I don't know what Pochettino's thinking at the moment he's got a young squad and um and these guys can be really, really good on their day. Otherwise, we wouldn't have, um, you know, we don't have them for nothing. So, for me, I just, I, I still maintain that I think we need to give them a chance and uh, not necessarily against, it, it's it's difficult at the moment to, to, to sum up the other teams right now, you know, it's because there's a lot of surprises in the and it's early on in the season. But I just think... What else do you have to lose? Because at the moment we we're not we're not a, a really good team, in my opinion, and and I think we need to shake things up and give these other these other players a chance. I think I think we'll see Ali regardless of injuries, because as I said earlier, he wasn't phased at all. I know they were only friendlies, but he wasn't phased at all by Real Madrid or or Milan. Um, I, I feel he's, he's got something a bit special. And if there is somebody with something a bit special, you don't need to hold them back just on principle. I mean, Everton and uh, Everton didn't do that with Rooney when he was a young young kid. They mm. put him in and he, he proved himself. And I, mean, I don't want to frighten Ali by overhyping him, but I, I just sense there's something there. Pritchard, I think, probably will come through via Europe. Unless something happens to uh, Ericsson. Um, but, I mean, there are other permutations possible if Ericsson gets injured or or uh, loses form. But I, I, I think Pritchard mainly via Europe. But I think Ellie could be could be put into it. Mm. 
he looked when he came on last week against United. He looked lively, um, yeah. And and from the little I saw of him in the preseason, again he looked uh, he looked as though with young players, often they can have that bit of they don't have any fear. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I can I can see him making an Im- impact. Um, I guess it's just. I think it will boil down to um, how the current players, um, the, the more uh, seasoned members of the squad, who, who or the more established players, how they perform. Um, if they can do a good job, then you know, well, I'm sure that we'll slowly bed them in. But if um, if it's a bit like last season, then yeah, it will probably be via, via the Europa. Somebody will. They'll, they'll make an impact there or one of the cup competitions and and they'll force, force their way in. The good thing is with Poch, and we saw this last season, is if one of those players comes in and does a job, they'll he'll persevere with them, you know. Mm. And Poch isn't worried, worried about dropping people because of reputations. You know, he, he did that with Kane, uh, with with Addy and Kabul last season and Kapoue and Lennon and so forth. Um, and even last week, um, or this week rather, with Bentlab, um, he was effectively dropped. So, um, you know, Pochettino is very good at giving people opportunity, but he's also good at if somebody doesn't take that grasp that opportunity, he's, he's also quick to um, give it to somebody else. Okay, um, right. So, uh, final two questions. Um, Kent Goodrich asks. Um, would you rather be filthy rich but have to be John Terry's personal assistant or dirt poor but you get to be anyone's assistant that you choose? Poor. Completely That's... poor. Poor. I'm going to buck the trend I'm, because it doesn't say that it's because of John Terry that you're becoming filthy rich. So if you're independently filthy rich, you could be his assistant and you could be such a shit assistant that he'd be glad to see the back of you. So maybe you might only last about three or four days. No, there, I, there's not. Once again, there is not enough things in the world that would let me. No, I'd kill him. Well, that would be that would be an advantage of being his personal assistant, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, I'd be. No, I'd be no, his assistant. No, 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 I know. <laughs> I'd be. I'd be his assistant to make sure he gets diarrhea every week. Exactly. Mm. Think of all the fun you could have with him. <laughs> no. Right, so final question, uh, best to last. Nick Seal asks, um, you finally got free of Judas, but now a more awful and terrifying ordeal awaits you. You're locked in a room with Addy and his family with constant reruns of him saluting at Tim at Dim Tim on a never-ending loop. The only way out is through the Arsenal club shop via John Terry's fa- family re- re- reunion. Um, so, do you stay for a lifetime of juju or dress up like a gooner, full kit wanker, whilst avoiding all things classless at the Terry household? Right, so your only escape out is through the Arsenal shop, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I'm out of there. I'm gone. I'll direct the place on my way out. And then I'd go to the John Terry family reunion, and if a fight hadn't already started, which I suspect it would have done, um, I'd start one, and that in that too, and I'd be out of there as well. It doesn't actually say how long you'd be locked in a room with with Addy. I'd, I would be second to be too long to be locked in a room with that thing. <laughs> It says right. a never-ending loop, so I never think it, yeah. it would it would be eternity. So yeah, I'd 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 crash out through the Arsenal club shop as well. Yeah, just right. head straight for the door. Get get out as quick as possible. Nikki, are you going to provide an alternative answer or do the same? Well, you know, I yeah. The thing is, I live in Africa, so I can I can cope with Eddie and his whole juju and the whole family and all the rest of it because you know what they'll sort each other out each other out anyway. So yeah, I, I'm not prepared to go anywhere near Arsenal, anywhere near John Terry. I'll just stick with with Eddie and somehow convince him to leave our club. <laughs> 
stop bloody sitting on a free bloody ride and just fuck off somewhere else. So yeah, I'll stick it out with Addy and 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 with my magical ability of, of, of powers of persuasion, I will get him to leave. It's quite disturbing how much of this podcast we've um, dedicated, the aforementioned. It'd be really nice in, in a couple of weeks' time, um, the podcast after the next, when it's sort of close to the transfer window, or we might, we might even have to wait to the podcast after that, after the transfer window's closed. And we won't ever have to mention Andy's name again, and hopefully he'll be... Um, applying his trade somewhere else. Oh. Yeah. I wouldn't bet on it. I mean, that people talk about Judas still, don't they? And even ask questions on the podcast about it. So mm. we can't wipe it clean, unfortunately. I don't think. Oh, I think we can. If if he's if he's <laughs> gone, right? If he if he if in two weeks from now he's left, that's it. I'm not going to talk about him anymore. I'm not going to. If there are any questions that come through to the podcast about Addy, they won't be read. As far as I'm concerned, that's it. His history. Bye bye. Um, good, so, good. Um, and yeah, hopefully he'll be gone forever, ever, ever, and ever, and ever. Right. Um, thank you, Mary, um, for joining us um, uh, and getting through the technical issues you had earlier. Thank you, um, Nikki, um, for uh, returning um, this season, and thank you, Greg. Um, next week's podcast will be um, slightly different to. Um, to the format that we've had so far um i'm not going to explain or or reveal any secrets but um you'll just have to listen um in a week or so um so on that note yep thanks everybody and the future's bright the future's lily white good night glory, glory.